All right, so congratulations. You got that mortgage pre-approval. That is fantastic. And you have an offer in that got accepted on that dream house. Well, did you know that you still could screw up that deal? <gasps> Today, what I want to talk about are seven tips to give you so that you don't mess up your deal, your mortgage gets fully approved, and you get the keys to that house. That's coming up next. All right, so let's just get into it. I'm Bob Jenis with Coldwell Banker here in Northern New Jersey. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you like what you see today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, but also consider subscribing. Totally helps me with growing the channel and providing more content to you guys. So I'd really appreciate it. So yeah, it's really exciting to get that mortgage pre-approval done and you have an offer that's been accepted. That's fantastic. But it's very possible that things can still come out during the under contract process as you're working with the underwriting department of your lender. I've had deals in the past where buyers maybe just didn't realize that they needed to disclose some information. Maybe for instance, it was rental income or something that wasn't initially disclosed, which could ultimately impact you getting your actual mortgage commitment. A lot of times folks might think, well, I, I'm pre-approved, I should be good to go. And yeah, that's a critical, critical first step, but hold the phone. Anything can happen between when that offer is accepted and you actually get those keys in your hand. So today I wanna to talk about seven tips so that you don't mess up that deal and you get to the closing table. So tip number one is no big ticket items. And what I mean by that is don't buy furniture. I know you're excited. You want to furnish that new house, but do not buy big ticket items like furniture. Don't buy a car. Don't buy a boat. Don't take a fancy trip to Paris because you're so excited you need to celebrate early because you got that house. If big ticket items show up in your credit while you're under contract and you're working with underwriting, that could change or adjust your credit background and history, which could ultimately impact you not receiving a mortgage commitment. Is that a nap? I tell my buyers all the time, keep everything as is until you close on that house. So when you got your pre-approval, right, there was certain credit and information that was provided to the lender. They're basing your pre-approval or your actual approval on that information that you provided. So if there's major changes in that credit, that really could impact you getting a true mortgage approval itself. So don't be fooled. Just because you have a pre-approval does not mean that you will get your actual mortgage commitment. So tip number one, like I said, no big ticket items until after you close on that home and those keys are in your hand. Tip number two is do not open any new credit. Don't even close credit. So if you think that might help me if I close an account, don't do it. Just keep everything as is. And just speaking of credit and opening credit, so no new credit cards, like things like that. Don't take a loan out on something. Because here's the thing, what the lenders are gonna be looking for is how much credit you actually have left on those cards or credit in general. And what lenders wanna see is a credit utilization that's under 30% typically across all of your credit cards or your loans. That's kind of one of the determining factors of, you know, what is your debt to income ratio, but also how much utilization of credit are you using? So below 30% is really a good spot to potentially be in as you're going through that underwriting process. So if you think of it like this, it could be, let's say you have a $10,000 credit limit on a credit card. 30% of 10,000 is about $3,000 or so. So if you're below that 3,000, you're not utilizing that entire $10,000. And ultimately having that really could put you in a better position to make sure that your mortgage actually gets approved. So again, don't open credit, don't close older credit card accounts, status quo, status quo. Okay, tip number three, I hear this from buyers pretty frequently, they get upset, they get annoyed that the underwriting department is asking for the same document for the fifth time. So tip number three, whatever underwriting wants, even if it's the same document, give them what they want. Here's the thing, multiple people might be working on your account and sometimes they don't communicate, they don't send documents between each other. So if they ask for that same W-2 statement for the fifth time, just send it. I know it's annoying, I know you've sent it before, totally understand, but whatever they want, send it to them. Because if you don't, that could actually cause delays in getting your mortgage approval, right? So, you know, in your contract, when you're under contract, you have a timeline that you have to follow. So you want to avoid delays. So again, get underwriting what they want, even if it is the same document for the fifth time, just that's what you need to do. Okay, tip number four is all about job changes. So it's really pretty critical to make sure that you are maintaining your employment history while you're getting your mortgage approved. Your lender is gonna look at your work background and make sure that you're still employed. 
because ultimately the loan has to be paid, so they want to make sure that you're employed. So at the beginning of the process, when you're getting pre-approved, they'll check on actual employment history. And then as you're going through the underwriting process and getting things approved, and you're going through all of the steps that are involved, they will continue to check. And here's the thing, like the day before closing, they will check one more time to make sure that you are still employed. And if something was to change in employment during that time period, even up to that last day, that could impact you getting your mortgage approved. Lenders like to see work history and they want stability. So that's what they're looking for. They want to ensure that who's gonna pay for the loan? If you're not working, that might just shift you being able to get approved for the loan. So if there is a job change, make sure you notify your lender right away. It could impact potentially you getting your mortgage approved or not. Okay, tip number five, I talked before about opening credit or closing credit. The other thing it's not recommended doing is co-signing on a loan for somebody. So let's say Aunt Betty comes to you and said, oh, I need to, I don't know, maybe she needs something. She needs to open up a car loan, for instance, but she needs you to co-sign for it. And you love your Aunt Betty, I totally get it, but you're in the process of buying a house. If you do co-sign that loan, that could impact your credit rating itself. And if you do co-sign that loan, that could impact you getting your mortgage approval. So apologize profusely to Aunt Betty, just tell her, hold off a little bit, let me close on my house first if she really needs your help. Since your credit would be tied to that loan, that's why you should not open or let's say co-sign a loan for somebody else. Sorry, Aunt Betty, but we'll talk to you after we close. Okay, tip number six is definitely shop around for an actual mortgage commitment. So when you get your pre-approval, it doesn't really matter what bank it's from. I have a lot of buyers who they might have one pre-approval with one company and then they come to the closing table, the actual closing beforehand, using another lender. It happens all the time, right? You're looking for the best rates, especially now, you know, here it is, um, what are we, July, 2023, and rates are a little bit higher. You know, mortgage rates are around 7% or so, so you might be looking to shop around. The thing I want you guys to keep in mind is you are on a timeline. So once you go under contract till the day of closing, you have a specific timeline you have to follow to actually get your mortgage commitment done. So as long as you meet that timeline, usually it's about a week before closing, depends on how the contract is written, but if you meet that timeline and you come forward with a mortgage commitment from somebody else, that's completely fine. So keep in mind that your final mortgage provider does not have to be the company that you used for your pre-approval itself. So again, shop it around, get the best rate you can, but keep within that time frame itself before you get to closing. Okay, the last tip, tip number seven, is keep everything status quo. I kind of alluded to this earlier in some of the other tips, but it is so true. The lender is looking for stability from the time that you got your pre-approval all the way through underwriting to get you to the mortgage commitment. They want stability. So keep everything as is. If you really fluctuate in credit cards, some of these big ticket items, for instance, or you co-sign that loan for Aunt Betty, that's a change in your credit. And having that change could impact you actually getting your mortgage commitment. So those are seven tips that you should consider to get that mortgage approved. So one of the critical steps besides getting your mortgage commitment is if you have a loan, is making sure that the house appraises. So the lender's gonna wanna make sure that whatever you offered on the home, that the value is there. And if there's a gap in that appraisal when they actually appraise the house, that could be kind of a next challenge, not just getting your mortgage commitment, but the appraisal itself. So what are some tips and tricks in regards to the appraisal? I've got some really good tips in this video that you might wanna check out about the appraisal process as well. So not just mortgage commitment, but appraisal also. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm Bob Jenis with Coldwell Banker here in Northern New Jersey, and I will see you guys in the next video.